Welcome back. I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about what this course will cover. And I also want to take the opportunity to tell you what this course will not cover um, as far as optimization is concerned. Um, and we'll be not covering some important things, and I want you to be aware of them and perhaps even know where, where, to, look, uh, where to look for them. So again, this course is all about optimization. So I've written out here the main thing that we're going to be uh, becoming acquainted with um, in, in, in great detail. So let's look a little bit more carefully at this. So it says minimize f of x subject to x in x. So what does this mean here? You should, whenever you see x, unless otherwise noted, you should think about x as a vector. So x is an element of, this, that's what the symbol means, rn which means it has n coordinates. In other words, when I write x, I really mean x1, x2, all the way up to xn, the way that, as I'm sure you're familiar with, any point here I could represent as a pair of, uh, by its coordinates, x1 and x2. So I want to minimize a function of n variables subject to some constraint set, and this is denoted by script x. So I want to understand this simple thing, these simple two lines here, what can they model? And then, of course, we have to ask the companion question of when can we solve such a thing? What restrictions do we need on f? And what restrictions do we need on x? And hopefully there will be some good intersection between f and x that can model interesting problems and f and x that we can solve very efficiently and effectively with, with uh, reliable algorithms. So let's talk about some specific problems. Classification is perhaps one of the most important uh, problems in machine learning. And I've depicted it here quite simply. There are circles and triangles. And we want to learn a rule for where, the, where uh, a new point. Uh, you see this point here. And you want to know, is this a circle or is it a triangle? Another point comes in, and you need to label it. Is this a circle or a triangle? So I've drawn these circles and triangles suggestively. So you might guess that, well, maybe, uh, maybe this is a good decision rule. But then you might say, well, actually, actually uh, scratch that. Maybe this is another decision rule. So these all seem equally good in that they don't make any mistakes on the points that I've seen. So one problem that has, uh, one formulation of this classification problem that has gotten a lot of attention and a lot of mileage in many different applications is the idea that among all of these possible different ways to classify the data that we've seen, one that seems to be, let's say, the best, or potentially the best, is one that leaves the most space. To put it a different way, and using the title, one that gives us the maximum margin. So here's a picture of that. So what we've done here is we've transformed the problem of separating circles and triangles into an optimization problem, into a problem where we're trying to find parameters of a line. We want to find a parametrization, the parameters that define this line, in order to make something as big as possible. Maximize this. You may remember that this class is about minimization, but of course, that doesn't really matter. I could just minimize the negative size of this or something like that. So this is a, this is, this is a, um, a very specific problem that shows that you know, one, kind of, uh, one kind of problem that we can model using, using optimization. Here's another problem. Let's look at it a little bit more carefully here. So this is an, the original image on the left. And this is a noisy image. And what I'd like to do, of course, is given the noisy image, I would like to recover something as close to the original as possible. Typically, we don't have access to the original. Otherwise, it would just be a silly exercise. So given only this image, how do I do something like denoising? How can we think about that? And in particular, given that there are many, many 
signal processing and image processing algorithms that do this, how can we think about this as an optimization problem? That's really the exercise that, uh, that, that, we, should, that we should grapple with in the context of this course. So we can think about every single parameter, uh, every single pixel in this, uh, in this image as being a parameter that is up to us to assign. And we need to do two things. We need to set all the pixel values so that I make as small as possible a particular cost function. My cost function might be something like distance from the original image plus a penalty for how noisy it looks. This is still abstract, but I hope that you can see that the sum of these two things really is a function of each and every single one of the parameters of the problem. Not to dwell on this particular problem too long, let's flip to another one that, uh, that actually shows this in action, even in a, starker, in a starker example. So what do we have here? On the right, I have an, an original image. A picture I took on my iPhone, in fact. And here, I have a deleted I've deleted 90% of the pixels at random. And maybe if you, now that you have access to the original, if you look closely enough, you can see that, yes, these are in fact the same, the same image. And from this, I'm actually able to recover this one in the center. Now again, if you look closely, you'll see that the recovered image and the original image are not identical. If you look carefully at the dresses, you'll see that there is more detail on the original image. But if I don't say so myself, this is pretty good. Now, what did, what did we do here? Something very similar in spirit to what I showed on the previous slide. What are the parameters? The parameters here are the value of every single one of the missing pixels. This is a high resolution image, so there's over one million pixels here that I deleted. How are we gonna fill those in? What information is there? What could we possibly use? Well. In this particular approach, what I used is the fact that natural images happen to have very few but sharp boundaries. And so what I did here is I tried to select values of the parameters. In this case, I said this is the values of the missing pixels. And the objective, in other words, the function f of x that I'm trying to make as small as possible, is a measure of how many sharp, sharp boundaries I have. So if you think about random noise, if you have random black and white pixels, the probability of a black pixel being surrounded by white pixels is very, very high. But if you look at any single patch, even an intricate patch of this picture, you'll see that it's very, very likely most pixels are surrounded by images, by pixels that are either exactly the same color or very close in color. So in other words, there are not that many sharp boundaries as you would have in just by filling in the, 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 the pixels in an arbitrary fashion. And just this little tidbit, just this piece of information from application domain of, 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 of images, natural images, is enough in order for us to build an optimization algorithm that goes from here to the recovered image. And this is called image in painting. Let's turn to a different application. This is a problem called matrix completion. So you can think about this as a matrix. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns in this simple example, and five rows. And as you can see, most of the values are blank, which means that they're question marks. And my job is to try to fill them in. So why is this an interesting problem 
uh, other than just an abstract statement of a problem. It's a model of recommendation systems or collaborative filtering. You could think about this as being a problem of finding movie recommendations. So if I line up my users as the columns and all the movies that I have in my collection as the rows, then all of these numbers here are the, uh, are the ratings that a particular uh, user gave. So for example, user three gave movie one a two, and user three did not rate movies two, four, or five, and the, this user did rate movie three and gave it a five. Okay, so this is, this is the problem, and I want to know how, how can I fill these in. So this is uh, more abstractly called the problem of matrix completion, and this also can be modeled as an optimization problem. It also has missing values, but the optimization problem, in other words, the objective, the F that we find here, is very, very different from the missing pixels problem that you just saw on the last slide. But nevertheless, I can also model this as minimizing a cost subject to X being in some constraint set. And we'll see more details of this as we move on. Neural networks are a very powerful paradigm that have been in, uh, in tremendous use in machine learning over the last uh, 10 years and especially the last five years. Neural networks have many, many parameters. For image classification, for example, the most successful uh, neural networks have upwards of 100 million parameters these days. And changing those parameters changes how a particular input image is classified. So the problem of image classification is given an image, I want to label it. I want to say, what do I see in the, in the picture? What, um, what, is, what is it depicting? So this, again, is an optimization problem. I want to minimize, in this case, my classification error, or I want to maximize how accurate I am on the data that I've seen. And what is my x? My x, in this case, is the weight of every single vector. So let me write that. So f of x for this neural network might be something like classification error. This is something we want to make as small as possible. And what my x represents might be all the weights of the neural network. So for those of you that haven't seen neural networks before, and I don't expect that you, that you, that you have, um, there is basically a weight for every single edge that you see here. And this is a very small neural network, but already there's, this is an interesting problem. There's quite a number of, of weights. And the list just goes on and on of different applications. So optimization can be used for scheduling, resource allocation for a variety of combinatorial problems, path planning, and on and on and on across different domains. Optimization has really been a transformative technology for many different, for many different areas. Um, but lately in machine learning, it's played a tremendous, uh, tremendous role. So we need to move on to the second question now. We've seen a little bit about what can this model but we also need to be able to solve these problems if this is of any use. It's not very useful to be able to model a rich class of problems if we can't say anything about them. So I need to ask, when can I solve this problem? And the answer that we're going to focus on in this class is we'll be able to solve our main objective here. When a function f has a property called convexity, when f is convex, we'll define that later. And also when the set x is also convex. So let me tell you at this point, what is this course not going to cover? So I've told you so far that you know, this is an interesting, this is something interesting. I've put a box around it three times, so it, it should be pretty interesting. Um, and I've also told you that we need f to be convex and x to be convex. So the natural question is, let's understand exactly what we can model in this, in this paradigm. So this problem of modeling. How do we model interesting problems using, using this restriction, using convex f and convex x, is a very important part of optimization, but not one that we'll have time to cover in this class. 
what we're going to be interested in is given once we have already modeled a particular problem, once we've modeled an application with a particular f and a particular set x, what are algorithms that we can use and we, what are algorithms that we can develop in order to solve this problem? So this is, this is really what we're going to focus on in this class. What are the basic algorithms for solving the class of problems when f is convex and x is convex? What are the main basic ideas that we could use to develop new algorithms? Also, what kind of guarantees do we have? How fast do they run? What computing resources do they need? We're going to cover a lot of specific examples, even though this is not going to be a course about modeling or applications. Most of our motivation is going to come from problems in machine learning. You've probably seen this already in the examples that I've talked about already in this lecture. We're going to start with least squares regression, talk about regularized regression, logistic regression, and a whole host of other M estimators. But we're also going to develop general purpose tools for convex functions, where the only thing we know is that we can compute a derivative. Or perhaps we know something about smoothness, but very general, very general and powerful uh, tools. So in summary, this class is going to cover algorithms for a fundamental, in other words, very broad, very broadly applicable problem class. And we're going to talk about algorithms that are tailored for these class of functions. I'm going to talk about uh, analysis of convergence rates. In other words, we'll give an algorithm and understand before we solve it. Not, oh, I ran it for six hours and it's solved. I want to know beforehand how long do I expect to, to run this in order to get a particular error that I, that I want. And we're also going to continually relate this to various implications for machine learning problems. We'll pick this up in the next session.